and welcome to the Division II Football Selection Show. I'm your host, Will Haskett. The march to a championship starts with just 28 teams continuing their season in pursuit of a national championship. Last year, just seven years after starting a football program, Colorado State Pueblo shut out Minnesota State Mankato 13 to nothing to win its first national championship. Now the question, will we have a new winner in 2015 or will a blue blood program add to its legacy? We'll find out at the D2 National Championship game, which will be played on December the 19th in Kansas City at Sporting Park. And at the top of that group of seven is the top seed, and that would be Midwestern State. Down 33-24 to Texas A&M Commerce, the Mustangs rallied to win the Lone Star Conference Playoff Championship yesterday, 37-33, and they sprint into the playoffs for the sixth time under head coach Bill Maskell. The Mustangs await, perhaps, our defending champs. Colorado State Pueblo is the four seed here. It's hard for a defending champion to enter the playoffs under the radar, but it feels that way for our defending champs. A march to another championship will be on the shoulders of the McDonald brothers. Senior Cameron leads the nation in rushing just shy of 2,000 yards, while younger brother Bernard eclipsed 1,000 yards yesterday in his brother's absence. They are the first runners in Thunderwolves history to both run for over 1,000 yards in a season for the fourth best rushing offense in the country. Heading west to meet them will be UND. No team is taking care of the ball better than the Greyhounds this season. UND turned it over just four times all year and will look to stay strong as they head to face the defending champs in Colorado. Next line is the two seed. That's Ferris State. The success of the Bulldogs season will be measured by what happens from this point forward. A second straight unbeaten regular season and GLIAC title are great, but this team has been talking national titles since day one. We all know about Jason Vanderlaan, who became college football's greatest rushing quarterback of all time earlier this year and looks to become the fourth player to win back-to-back -back Harlan Hill trophies in the first since Danny Woodhead in 2007. But as good as the number two offense has been this season, it was a pep talk that inspired the defense, and they come from behind win at Finley early in October, and that made this team more multidimensional heading into the playoffs. The Bulldogs open with Texas A&M Commerce. It has been 20 years since the program last made the NCAA postseason, and they did it by leading the nation in turnover margin, gaining 18 more possessions than their opponents this season. Ashland is the three seed in this region. No team in the country converts on third down better than the Eagles. They move the chains more than half the time. That is one big reason why Ashland captured the South Division of the GLIAC this season. And it will be a conference showdown with Grand Valley State on a 17th trip to the tournament, having won it all four times in program history. David, as I look at Super Regional number four, the only thing I can think of is how stacked this region is with great teams. A lot of potential national champions can all come out of here. That was my initial thoughts, too, when I first saw this uh, this bracket. It's unbelievable how many great teams are in this, in this bracket. I mean, you have Grand Valley State, which has got a got a pedigree of winning national titles. Um, Fair State is the team I'm really interested in seeing just because they are motivated to get to the national title game. And then they got the best, or maybe one of the best, uh, Division II offensive players we've seen in the last two years. I mean, he has 22 uh, passing touchdowns and 19 rushing touchdowns. That's just unbelievable. And they're not even the number one seed. <laughs> and Midwestern State, I mean, they their only loss was to Texas A&M Commerce. So, I mean, you, you can make an argument for any one of these teams to make it out of this region and into the Final Four. Unbelievable region. Can't wait to kick it off in that one. Okay, overall impressions. You've seen all 28 teams. Everybody has a difficult pathway. However, they're going to get to Kansas City. Anything stand out after all of these brackets have come together? The team, again, that stands out to me just based on what they've done all year is Ferris State. Uh, it's a team I've been putting in pretty high up in my power rankings all year long uh, just because of the quarterback and, he, and he's a motivated quarterback he's not about his stats he, he wants to win he wants to get to the uh, all the way and it's nothing it's tough I've seen uh, players who win the Harlan Hill and they're in the playoffs and then they have to accept their trophy and they're at the division two title game and their team didn't quite make it that far uh, so they have that motivation Jason having won the Harlan Hill but not being in the division championship game, I really see him motivating his team to get that far. Northwest Missouri has sort of been a surprise team because they have so much youth. They do have a senior quarterback, but few people thought they would go undefeated. I think Minnesota and Cato is going to be a tough out. And like you said, the one team that's gone, gone under, the, under the radar is uh, Pueblo State, uh, and they've only lost one game. Uh, <laughs> but probably not too many people are talking about them. So 
Yeah. But they're in such a tough region. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see. Absolutely. So many teams and only one trophy at the end of it. Thank you so much, David. Looking forward to the rest of the playoffs. You're welcome. Now we know which 28 teams still have a chance at a championship.